We've got big news and it involves a radical change to our long-term plans. And we're going to tell you all about it in this week's video. We're heading back to Turkey where we'll spend at least a year sailing the stunning Turkish coast. And some of you might like to join us as crew. You're probably wondering why we're doing this and there are several reasons. First and foremost we've got many good friends in cash who we miss dearly. The exchange rate between the Aussie dollar and the euro is not in our favour. For every one Aussie dollar we only get 60 euro cents. Whereas in Turkey one Aussie dollar buys four Turkish lira and the cost of living is so much more affordable in Turkey. Mm. We're also planning doing something that we never considered doing before and that's taking out a 12-month contract with the marina and we've got several reasons for that too. <laughs> the Seto Marina at Cash is just one marina in a group of 10 and when you take out a 12-month contract that gives you access to all of the other marinas in the chain for up to 30 days at each of the other marinas. And this is an important point. Taking crew on board at a marina is obviously easier than at anchor. And as we sail up and down the Turkish coast, we can pick up crew at different locations. Hiding from the winter storms in the Mediterranean is essential. And even though many of our friends who are based in the Cash Marina have been out sailing in December, January and February, there's always a possibility that a storm can pop up, so it's good to have a contingency plan and a marina as a bolt hole. We get so many private messages and emails from our subscribers saying that what we're doing is inspirational and they're either saving up to buy a boat in a few years or they're considering the liveaboard lifestyle and not sure if it's for them or not. What we're offering our crew is a try before you buy option which I think is pretty invaluable for someone who's making such a radical lifestyle change. Yeah. So if you'd like more information about crewing, send us an email to the address on screen right now. But obviously before we set sail east to Turkey, we need to get ABC back in the water. And that means doing a lot of jobs just like these. A few videos back we asked you for a solution about our yeah. seating wire uh, breaking fairly often. And what you have suggested is that we take these shackles, these uh, U-shackles, and put the actual bolt through the chain here, and that way the seizing wire has less chance of being rubbed and broken. So we're going to swap those out today, put new seizing wire on, put new uh, thread locker on it. So that's one done. Let's get on with the rest then. Then we're going to lay the chain out through the length of the boatyard and top and tail it and remark it at 10 meter intervals. That's the plan. Let's see how this one goes, eh? <laughs> Let's get measuring and pop in little bits of plastic in there. That looks a lot more than 50 metres. Yeah, but it'd be great if it was 100, wouldn't it? It'd be fabulous. <laughs> We've been counting wrong all year. <laughs> We've been like well over. <laughs> no, I think, I think that's probably right. Now would be a good time to use the rangefinder. Well, we've laid our chain out through the boatyard and when we looked at it we thought wow that looks a lot more than 50 meters and i thought well let's check 
and perfect time to test out the rangefinder. So Ansha stood at one end, I went down to the other end. Very simple, you just power it on. Uh, it's got several modes, it'll go through fog and things like that, but I just put it on the basic setting, focused on Ansha, pushed the button, and it told me it was 50.5 meters exactly. So great little tool, gonna be using this for a lot of uh, med mooring and stuff like that. Now, back to the chain job. Our chain is not exactly 50 meters, it's a little bit short, <laughs> but we've been doing fine with it so far. So it's not how long it is, Baz, it's what you do with it exactly. <laughs> so now we've marked out our 10 meter lengths along the length of the anchor chain. We're going to take this end, which normally lives in the locker, and we're going to reattach it to the shackles on the anchor and the swivel, put Loctite on the bolts and seizing wire where we can, and uh, tidy it all up again. So this will go on the other end of the chain, then that gets hooked into the inside of the locker. One of our viewers also said that stainless steel comes to the end of its life at some point and there's no visible signs that it's, it's going to give, it just gives and that's it. So if you know what sort of lifespan we can expect from these stainless steel shackles, leave it in the comments down below and inform us and everyone else. Cheers! So you're looking a little bit apprehensive there, what's going on? Well, nothing much. Just got to go up the mast to put this in. Got your safety gear on? Yeah. Got your Helly Hansons? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got, if I do fall, if I don't break my head, I've got pads to land on. <laughs> At least your knees will be safe, that's great news. <laughs> With Ansha going up the mast, we're going to use two lines on her for safety. One will be the spare halyard and the other one will be the topping lift. Now we've just released the topping lift and you saw the water that came out of the kicker. I want to know, is that normal? Is that standard that water would come out of the kicker like that? Let us know in the comments below. Is it on? No. Oh. Got electrical power? Did you turn the batteries off? No, I didn't turn the batteries off. Is it on? No. Bugger. Might be a wiring thing then. Yeah. Just wiggle, wiggle the bulb a bit. All right, tell me if the deck light comes on. Yeah. So the, the deck light's on? Yeah. Well, that sucks. I mean, the connection is not good. It's not rusted or anything? Yeah. The bulb you took out, did it look all right? Yeah. Okay, we'll leave the, leave the new one in there. All right. Because it's definitely seated properly. Yeah. It pops into place. Yeah, so when you lock it into place, you can't, you can't pull it up and pull it out. No, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the connections. Right. Well, that was a bit of a disappointment really, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I was pleased that the whole hoisting up the mast thing went well. <laughs> <laughs> I, told you, I told you, coming down is the worst bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you found that the fitting was rust free, no corrosion, you swapped out the globe or the LED yeah. and we tried to... In fact this is the old one yeah, and it's still in really, really good, good condition. Uh, we switched on the steaming light and it didn't work so obviously we've got a wiring issue between the steaming light and the uh, electronic panel. Yeah I looked at the connections um, and the connections looked fine, there was no trace of rust, they were solid. So yeah, it's going to be the wiring, isn't it? Like you say, another job. Yeah. But you've got wiring on the list anyway, haven't you? Well, not that kind of wiring, but we, anyway. Yeah, we didn't want to go up the mast again. And... No. <laughs> <laughs> it is strange though, because the, the deck light and the steaming light are one fixture. Mm. Obviously they've got two separate cables running to them, 
and the deck light works, mm. but the steaming light doesn't. Must be the wiring then. Gotta be. Yeah. All right, we move on. Mm -hmm. We mentioned in last week's video that we'd received a package from Heinz in Canada, and he'd sent us this brilliant cleaning product, and we're going to test it out today on our very dirty dinghy. You ready to go? Got me hairs ready. Good girl. of our dinghy is aluminium and we've cleaned with the Brilliant uh, here with the first first going over and just for comparison this is what it looks like if you just clean it with a cloth and water so there is quite a huge difference there and here looking at the inflated tube again this is a first going over with the Brilliant product uh, and this is just uh, a quick wipe over with some water it's good to be using a product that's all natural and uh, does no harm to the environment. Thanks Heinz. If you combine the brilliant product with a lot of elbow grease, this is the result you get. I'm very pleased with this. We noticed at the end of last summer that this bumper here was going a bit gummy uh, with UV damage. Um, so when we do get to Turkey, we will have a cover custom made for the dinghy. Now that we've got the dinghy all clean, we've stored it underneath the hull to protect it from bird droppings and other bits and pieces that might fall from the sky. And we've also got the outboard engine mounted here, again protected underneath the hull. When we first bought this engine in Spain, there was a kill switch fitted here and it broke within the first month and Mercury refused to replace it under warranty for some reason or other. So while we were in Turkey, we had Aydin service the engine and asked him to remove the kill switch mechanism. He's also taken the, the cabling out from it. So when we do get back to Turkey, um, we'll have him rewire it and fit the kill switch that I bought in the UK. When the outboard is mounted to the dinghy and we're at full throttle and planing, the prop kicks up a lot of spray on here, it falls into the boat, and eventually we get a lot of water in the boat. So, to fix that, we bought this, the Easterner Hydrofoil. Now, apparently it eliminates cavitation and porpoising, forces the stern up and keeps the bow down, and includes all the stainless steel hardware. So we're going to fit that this morning. I'm just going to position it right at the, the curve here, and then, uh -huh, that would be right. <laughs> There's always something. Well, that was a right royal pain in the bum to, uh, to get that first bolt through, uh, simply because the, the drill is always at an angle, no matter what, whether we come from the top or the bottom here when we're, we're drilling. It's always at a slight angle, so it creates the hole to be a slight angle. So the bolt will actually go through the hole, no problem. It's, there's plenty of clearance there. But getting the bolt through uh, and then in a straight line to the top of the fin I had to do some MacGyvering, so basically just drilling out the plastic a bit on one side and then on the top and then drilling out the plastic on a different side at the bottom and also making the hole a little bit off centre if you like. But yeah, that's the first one on. Uh, lessons learned from that one. I'll see if we can do something different on the other side. But yeah, things are never easy on a boat. It looks like such a simple <laughs> job, a doesn't simple it? Job. I know. <laughs> so eventually, we used the uh, universal tool of choice and uh, basically just hammered the uh, bolt from the bottom to force it through the, the plastic. So that's that bit done. Now I've just got to tighten it up. Right, well, that's another job off the list. And um, yay! Hopefully we'll have a drier dinghy this season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially if we've got uh, extra crew. <laughs> we don't want them getting soggy bottoms, no, do we? No, we don't want soggy bottoms. <laughs> I think Anshia did a fantastic job editing together this week's video, and I'd like to know what you think about her editing techniques. Leave a comment down below if you would. I'd like to mention that we've got a new patron. His name is Chris Moore, and he is from America. 
So welcome aboard Chris and thanks very much for becoming a patron. Next week on Selling ABC we are hooking into more maintenance jobs and we do finally get to take a look at the situation about the keel bolts. So if you enjoyed this week's video don't forget to leave us a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any future episodes of Sailing ABC. Thank you.